It's about that time of day again here, folks. Welcome back to the newsletter, boys and girls. Joseph James here. Wednesday evening. It's already July 1st. Welcome to the month of July. July 1st, 2015. Last newsletter of this first week of July. You know, we got a holiday weekend coming right around the corner. We got some huge news on the calendar tomorrow morning. We'll talk about all of this stuff as well as our strategies waiting for a non-farm payroll Thursday, right? Markets are closed on Friday. We'll cover all that tonight's newsletter. Before we begin, though, I do want to remind you, everything I'm going to cover in tonight's newsletter, I'm going to go over all this stuff with all of our students here at schooltrade.com. Check out schooltrade.com. Join the free trial. Register as a beginner, intermediate, or advanced member. I'll talk more about that towards the end of this video here this evening. Most importantly, though, I do want to remind you here to make sure you're watching this video on our trading blog here at sidewaysmarkets.com. There are three reasons why. You should be watching this video on our trading blog. The first reason is you can download all the charts that you're going to see in tonight's video. All the charts in tonight's video, you can download them right below the video on our blog here at Sideways Markets. Second thing here, I've got a free pass for all the non-members. If you're not a member of School of Trade and you'd like to be a member for a day or maybe a couple of days, I'll give you guys a free pass to come out and attend our live trade room as a guest. Grab that in the upper left-hand corner. And then how about our newsletter list? I'm going to send you an email every evening when the newsletter is ready to go out. Now you'll never have to worry about missing another newsletter report again. All I need is your name and your email address. And then make sure you check your inbox because I'm going to send you a verification email if you register for the free pass or if you register for our nightly newsletter mailing list. So make sure you download today's charts. Have those ready for tomorrow's session. Grab your free pass and register for the newsletter mailing list. And don't be afraid to tell a friend, too. That's okay. More the merrier. I'm always open to sharing new ideas with new traders here. So don't forget to share this information with a friend. You ready to rock and roll? Last few drops here of this first week of the month. we got non-farm payrolls tomorrow. The Greek referendum on Sunday, right? Fitting here to start with the Euro futures. Uh, big thing right now, though, is is markets are really low volume ahead of this holiday weekend. This is a big deal. This 4th of July weekend in the United States is a big deal. Today was Canada Day. Can't say a bad thing about Canada Day. What a, what a great holiday, right? What a great holiday. So holiday today in Canada, noticeably lower volume early part of the morning today. It did pick up later in the day here, especially after inventories came out on crude oil. But the theme, though, the theme right now going into it is you've got some inconsistent volume ahead of a long weekend, holiday weekend, summertime holiday weekend. You have non-farm payrolls pending tomorrow morning at 8.30 a.m. That's going to have some people sitting on hands. And, of course, unless you've been living under a rock the past few weeks, everybody's back and forth about Greece. And so we're going to be waiting until Sunday to hear about that. So add it all up. We've got to get to it early tomorrow morning. It's going to be an early in and early out scenario tomorrow. So make sure you understand. We've got 8.30 a.m. news tomorrow morning. And after that, it's going to taper off pretty quickly. I'd be very surprised tomorrow if we're getting any real decent volume in the market after 11 o'clock tomorrow morning. So it's almost a half trading day tomorrow. We'll get at it early in the European and U.S. sessions. But again, tomorrow afternoon, though, I don't think you're going to get much out of that thing because everybody's going to be getting the barbecue grill cleaned up, ready to go for this weekend. All righty. Let's start out here with the Euro futures, the 6E, my 16 anchor chart, right where we want these these, these, uh, these buyers and sellers here right now, this is exactly where you want the euro to be. The euro is range-bound, now testing support levels near the lows of the range. Buyers will be looking for seller failure at these support levels, while the sellers will be waiting for price to retrace up off these lows right to resistance levels overhead for the best selling opportunities. So couple couple key components here you want to be aware of. First of all, you have this larger trading range. Sorry about that. My drawing tools here all messed up. You got this larger trading range, right? Trading range high, trading range low. In between that, you've got this trading range, right? So it's kind of a wedge consolidating area here. And you'll notice here, we want to be buying these lows, selling these highs, staying away from the middle of this trading range. There's a lot on this chart right now. I wanted to make sure I got it all on here so you can kind of see my rationale for everything right now. But Bottom line is, though, we've got some key levels of support down here. Swing lows around that 09.59. We've got some major trigger zone support, a trend line support down here as well. So a lot of support levels down here. This is exactly where we want to be looking for seller failure. So 
just like we've been saying the past few days here in the newsletter, as we go lower into that wedge, into that triangle, into that consolidation, we're looking for those sellers to try a few times, right? Try once, try twice, so we can buy into those stop losses of those sellers, right? Heck, I'll even take it going a little bit lower than that down here, right? Once, twice, buy that, buy that support. So we're looking to buy these lows right now. The easiest way to do it is going to be looking for the sellers to try and the sellers to fail. I like to wait for the sellers to try twice, and then once they fail, I'll just buy right into their stop losses. Another thing you want to be aware of is, is this trading range right smack in the middle of this price wedge. So the price wedge is the first big clue. Then the second clue here is we have this trading range. Now this trading range, you might be asking, well, what does this have to do with anything? Because we're not even trading inside the range right now. You'd be amazed how much these ranges really last. These things stick around for a while. You'll notice we have some range expansion levels above and below. I could have put another one up here too. There's one more up there too. But bottom line though is, look where we are right now. We're sitting right on top of that range expansion support. Another range expansion support right down at where we where we opened up right on Monday. So very, very important to understand here right now that short-term trading range that short-term trading range is going to give us additional areas of support and resistance right but in this case we're going to use those areas below it as support so bottom line right now here's the plan i know we're going lower right now in the short term here but we are oversold we're at a range expansion support if we do push lower I really don't care how far down we go tomorrow morning in the pre-market of the U.S. opening bell, 8.20 a.m. on euro, right, euro currency futures. So if we keep pushing lower, again, I'm looking for sellers to try twice, fail, buy it back up. And then sellers, you guys really got to be patient right now because unless you're willing to sell this low, not with my account, I, I wouldn't recommend it, right? Now, we saw a good example of that today on crude oil. It just blew right through those lows. And... You know, following that rule of not selling the lows, you know, today was a good example on crude. Just nothing we can do about it, right? Nothing we can do about it. The best plan of attack is going to be to buy this low. So as it goes lower, looking to buy it on seller failure. Sellers, I would really stay patient here and wait for another shot to sell it once it gets back up into those resistance areas overhead. Don't forget, we'll have this chart up and running live in real time tomorrow morning in our trade room. Make sure you guys come out and see us for real-time updates here on the Euro. How about the S&P? The E-mini S&P is bearish, range-bound, ahead of the non-farm payrolls report tomorrow morning. Got a very nice uh, bullish report out of the API number today. We'll see how, or sorry, out of the... Uh, out of the ADP number today, I should say, all these acronyms these days. Uh, sellers, you guys are looking to fade the highs of the range for the best opportunities. Buyers, you guys are looking for trades down at those range lows. So right now in the S&P, we do have a bearish bias, as you can tell, right? There's a, definitely a bearish bias to this. We're going lower here as we go into this sideways movement here. So we definitely have a bearish bias. The best trades right now, if I had to guess right now where the best selling opportunities would be, yeah, gap fill. See, we talked about this earlier this week, and we said, you know what? They didn't fill that gap all the way. They sure tried. Could this be the time when it gets done? You know, we get a measured move going higher here, fill that gap, and then that might give us our next big selling opportunity off of these highs. The problem is going to be trying to buy up to those highs. That's going to be really difficult because you've got this trend line on the way. You've got swings in the way. You know me. I just don't like buying into resistance. I'd rather buy at support and take my profit at resistance. So if you're a bull right now, please be aware you are against the directional bias. So bulls, you guys are looking to buy these lows. Bulls, you guys are looking to buy these lows. Just remember, though, if you're going to be a buyer at these support levels right now of this wedge and of this little short-term trading range, it's got to be a scalp until proven otherwise. So take a quick on the S&P, little four tick target, and then move that stop to point of entry and let it run. Every counter trend, remember, bias is down. So we know that trying to buy right now 
everything's got to be a scalp until proven otherwise. Don't get too greedy trying to buy those lows. The sellers, you guys are the ones here that really have the directional bias in your favor. I'm looking to sell at resistance. I'm looking to sell at resistance. If we get up, if we get up around these areas, though, you definitely want to be patient to get that gap fill. You know, it's almost all gaps get filled. We just don't know when they're going to get filled, right? So there's really no telling. But what I do know for a fact, though, is is that if we get up that close to that gap, there's going to be a lot of buyers there. There's going to be there's going to be fewer sellers at that area. So we definitely be looking for that gap to be filled here and then get that next push down. Either way you slice it though, bears, you guys have the bias right now. Selling highs, selling resistance, selling that gap resistance. And if we do make it all the way up, tomorrow is non-farm payroll Thursday, not Friday, because the holiday. We do have measured move resistance though. They're at 2090. And again, I think the hardest part is going to be getting long up to that area. If you want to be a buyer up to that area, what do you think is the best way to do it? Look for the sellers to try to sell the highs twice. Yeah, fail, buy right into their stop losses. The easiest way to be a buyer right now, you're going to have to really be patient and wait for the sellers to try and fail at those resistance areas overhead. Then you can buy right into those stop losses, and that'll throw that price right at your first target. That way, you're taking all the risk off the trade quickly, and then if you can get it to keep going here. Again, the problem is your, your bias is down right now, so until that changes, the majority of the market will be on the bear side. So you've got to be careful buying into resistance, wait for the sellers to try twice, and then buy into their stop losses. And then, of course, the easy money is going to be, for the buyers at least, down at these support levels, right? You won't need to worry so much about going against the grain so much there. Just make sure you're taking your profit off relatively quickly and holding a portion of it. Again, I would look for the best selling opportunities up around this area overhead. You guys are the plan now for the S&P. Now, remember... Tomorrow's non-farm pay report is coming out before the U.S. opening bell at 9.30. So you should be able to watch that news come out, 8.30, 8.45, things slow down, wait into the 9.30 U.S. open and follow the trend direction you're seeing after tomorrow's major news. A lot of what we're doing tonight is just getting ready for whatever could come our way tomorrow. Because remember, this news event tomorrow, non-farm payrolls, it is no slouch. 8.30 a.m. tomorrow, it's the biggest news event we get as day traders, and it comes out the first Friday of every one month. Of course, they're giving us Friday off this year, uh, or this month, because of the 4th of July holiday on Saturday. How about some crude? How about some crude? Didn't even have a shot at buying that low. There was absolutely no way to get into that bad boy. We ended up right on down near those lows before the inventory number came out and just, just took off to the downside. Our plan right now, I mean, we are well oversold here on crude. Big drops, almost always equal corrections and big pops back up. I was, I was honestly surprised to see such a strong bearish push on this just because over the past four or five weeks, we've seen the opposite happen. And this was this was, this is a rarity where the actual news event was relatively uh, 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 consistent with what the price action did, right? It's, uh, I just talked about the last time the newsletter, right? Usually it's the exact opposite of what you would think that news number was. But draw in inventories, or should I say a build in inventories today, it did match last night's API number, and price fell lower. Problem was, it fell down through the lows, and we just never got the profit taking from those sellers until maybe now. Now here we are coming in. We are bearish and oversold at the lows of the bearish channel. You can see our short-term bearish channel. You can also see here, get a nice extension support level down here. This is pretty much as far as this thing's going to go. It may push lower, but... You know, histor historically speaking, though, <laughs> this thing is going to be ready for a correction. You're going to have too many sellers taking profit. You're going to have too many buyers trying to jump all over this. So you have to assume now this price is going to come up, if, if at the very least, just off these bear channel lows and rotate back to those highs before we get the next push down. Maybe we go lower. Tomorrow is a non-farm payroll Thursday. It is a summertime, shortened week. Volume will be a little bit lower than normal. 
right? This market really could, it really could do whatever it, whatever it wants to tomorrow. But what I'll be looking for tomorrow is, is those seller failures at these lows. So buyers, we have the short-term opportunities to push this price back up to resistance levels overhead. So definitely be looking for, you can probably finish my sentence right now on this one. How do I buy in this downtrend? I wait for sellers to try and fail. Where would those sellers try and fail? Well, they'll be short-term resistance areas overhead. For example, this prior low at 57.26, you know there's going to be some sellers here that will try to sell that area, not knowing what's going on here. And so that'll be a great spot to begin looking for those sellers trying and failing. Now, tomorrow morning, once I open up my trade room at 8 o'clock in the morning, I'm going to go out and find some additional areas of resistance out here, and we'll use those as real-time, short-term resistance areas to go looking for exactly the same thing, right? Looking for sellers to try and fail, try and fail, try and fail on our way back up to that channel high, up to that resistance target overhead. 58, 54, 58, 19, big round number at 58 even. That's definitely where you would expect this price to be going tomorrow. Will it happen before non-farm payrolls tomorrow? That is to be determined. We'll have to wake up here in the US uh, or in London tomorrow morning and see what that brings for us. So buyers, you guys have short-term opportunities to push this price back up. Look for seller failures if you're a bull right now on crude. And then of course, sellers, what can we do here? What do we want to do here? It's very difficult to justify being a seller right here, isn't it? It really is. You're at the range lows. You're at the channel lows. You're at extension support. Look at how far away from that 200 moving average we are right now. This price is going to need to correct. It's probably not going to, not going to be too much longer until we do get that correction here back up into that range. So sellers, stay patient. You guys want to be patient here if you're a seller here looking for that best sell here back off that channel high. Look for that channel high, guys. That'll be your great target for your buyers out there, and that'll be your next leg down for you sellers out there in the market right now. There's your crude. And then, boy, we got this sleeper here on gold right now. Gold just, gold just kind of snoozing away here right now. It continues to go lower. Nothing really different about this gold right now. Gold is bearish ahead of non-farm payrolls, which means we will be looking for selling opportunities at resistance levels overhead. Buyers, you guys can look for opportunities at support levels. But remember, if you're going to be buying right now on gold, you are trading against the trend. So you got to assume it's a scalp and tool it otherwise. And if you're a buyer, you're looking for seller failure at these lows, right? One thing you want to remember about gold Gold is always going to be one of the most challenging markets a few a few days before and a day maybe two after this non-farm payroll report. So if I had to pick the most difficult markets to trade right now, it would be gold because of non-farm payrolls and, of course, that euro. But the euro is range bound, which is pretty easy to anticipate. Uh, the only thing we're dealing with, though, right now is is that dollar index will be affected by tomorrow's non-farm payrolls. That will have a trickle-down effect with the euro and, of course, the gold. So don't be surprised if this gold is just sleeping away the time until 8.30 tomorrow morning. And then I'm going to stay focused on looking for selling opportunities on the yellow metal, selling at resistance areas overhead. That's where your best trades are going to come here on gold right now. And if you're a buyer right now, You've got some great support, right? You've got a trend line support here. You've got trigger zone support. You've got measured move support. There's a lot of support levels here. Just again, be careful if you're going to be buying your own gold right now. You are swimming against the stream, and there's going to be a big brown bear waiting to scoop you up if you're not careful. So I would wait for, don't just buy it blindly. Wait for the sellers to try a few times and then buy right into their stop losses as they're taking profit and as they're being forced to buy their way out of their short positions right at these levels of support. Stay patient on gold. Stay patient on euro. The euros are waiting for the, the referendum on Sunday. We probably won't see much more big news on that until Monday next week after the holiday weekend. We know that crude oil is oversold. We know that the S&P also is very much range bound with that with that bearish bias. All eyes are on the all eyes are on non-farms tomorrow, guys. All eyes are on non-farms tomorrow. And oh, one more thing. Please be safe this weekend. Please be safe this weekend. As I wrap up this this newsletter, I always remind myself make sure you come home from the fireworks show on on Saturday with all 10 of those 
or 11 for some of us, all 10 or 11 of our fingers and toes, all right? Please be safe this weekend. Wear your helmet, wear your seatbelt, right? Be careful with the kids around water. You know the drill. You know the drill. I don't have to tell you that stuff, guys. But, you know, I care about you, and I want to make sure I see you guys all back here on Monday. The next time we work together is going to be Monday, July 6th. That's the Monday after the holiday weekend. Be well out there. Be safe out there. Tomorrow morning, we have 8.30 a.m. news. I'm opening up our trade room tomorrow morning at 8 a.m. Eastern time. I hope to see you there with me. And in the meantime, make sure you check out our free trial here at schooltrade.com. You're going to learn more with me in one week on my trial than anywhere else on the interwebs. Also, learn more about our three levels of membership, beginner, intermediate, and advanced. And I've always got someone standing by to help answer your questions, guys, 24-7, 365. Have a great holiday weekend. Kick some behind out there tomorrow morning. Follow the plan, and you know where to reach me. My name is Joseph. Thanks so much for being a part of the newsletter. I will not see you guys tomorrow night for the nightly newsletter. It's going to be an early in, early out Thursday session, and then off of the barbecue for this weekend. Have a great weekend. Have a great evening. I'll see you in the morning. Adios, amigos. Bye-bye for now.